In general, intelligence is not task-specific skill scaled up to many skills because there is an infinite uh, space of possible skills. General intelligence is the ability to approach any problem, any skill, and very quickly master it using very little data because this is what makes you able to face anything you might ever encounter. This is what makes... Uh, uh, this, this is the definition of generality. Like generality is not specificity scaled up. It is uh, the ability to apply your mind to anything at all, to arbitrary things. And this requires, fundamentally, this requires the ability to adapt, to learn on the fly efficiently. The scale uh, a maximalist argument, really, it boils down to these people, they, they, they refer to scaling laws, which is this, this empirical relationship that you can draw between how much compute you spend yeah. on training a model and the performance you're getting on benchmarks, right? And the, the key question here, of course, is, well, how do you measure performance? What it is that you're actually uh, uh, improving by adding more compute and more yeah. data? And well, it's, it's benchmark performance, right? And the, no, the, the thing is, the way you measure performance is not a technical detail. Uh, it, it's, it's, not, it's not an afterthought because it's going to uh, narrow down the set of questions that you're asking. And so uh, accordingly, it's going to narrow down the set of answers that, that, you're, that you're looking for. If you look at uh, the benchmarks we're using for LMs, they're all memorization-based benchmarks. Like sometimes they're literally just knowledge-based, like, uh, like a school test. And even if you look at the ones that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, explicitly about reasoning, you realize if you look closely that it's uh, in order to solve them, it's enough to memorize uh, a finite set of uh, uh, reasoning patterns. Uh, and then you just reapply them. They're, they're like static programs. LLMs are very good at memorizing static programs, small static programs. And, and they've got this sort of like bank of uh, solution programs. And when you give them a new puzzle, uh, they can just fetch uh, the appropriate program, uh, apply it, and it's looking like it's reasoning, but really it's not doing any sort of on the fly program synthesis. All it's doing is program fetching. So you can actually solve all these benchmarks with memorization. And so what, what you're scaling up here, like if you look at the models, they are uh, uh, big parametric curves uh, fitted to a data distribution, which I can descent. So they are basically these big interpolative uh, databases, interpolative memories. And of course, if you scale up the size of your database and you cram into it uh, more knowledge, more patterns and so on, uh, you are going to be increasing its, its performance as measured by memorization benchmark. That's, that's kind of obvious. But as you're doing it, you are not increasing the intelligence of the system one bit. You are increasing the skill of the system. You are, you are increasing its usefulness, its uh, scope of applicability, but not its intelligence because skill is not intelligence. And that's the fundamental confusion um, that, that, that people uh, uh, run into is that they're confusing skill and intelligence. As far as the interpolation goes, so, okay, let's look at one of the benchmarks here. There's, th there's one benchmark that does grade school math, and these are problems that m like a smart high schooler would be able to solve. Um, it's called GSM 8K, and these models get 95% on these. Like basically, sure. they always nail That's it. That's memorization benchmark. Okay, l let's talk about what that means. So here's one question about from that benchmark. So 30 students are in a class, one fifth of them are 12 year olds, one third are 13 year old, one tenth are 11 year olds. How many of them are not 11, 12, or 13 years old? So I agree, like this is not rocket science, right? You can write down on paper how you go through this problem and a high school kid, at least a smart high school kid should be able to solve it. Now, when you say memorization, it still has to reason through how to think about fractions and what is the context of the whole problem and then combining the different calculations it's doing. It depends how you, how you want to define reasoning, but there, there are two definitions you can use. So one is I have available uh, a set of program templates. It's, it's like the structure of the puzzle, uh, which, which can also generate its solution. And I'm just going to identify the right template, which is in my memory. Um, I'm going to input the new values into the template, run the program, get the solution. And you could say this is reasoning. And I say, yeah, sure, okay. Uh, but another definition you can use is reasoning is the ability to, when you're faced with a, with a puzzle, given that you don't have already a program in memory to solve it, you must synthesize on the fly a new program based on uh, bits of pieces of existing programs that you have. You have to do on the fly program synthesis. And it's actually dramatically harder than just 
fetching the right memorized program and reapplying it. I think maybe we are overestimating the extent to which humans are so sample efficient. They also don't need training in this way where they have to drill in these kinds of pathways of reasoning through certain kinds of problems. So let's take math, for example. Yeah. It's not like you can just show a baby the axioms of set theory and now they know math, right? So they, they when they're growing up, you had to do years of teaching them pre-algebra. Then you got to do a year of teaching them uh, doing drills and going through the same kind of problem in algebra, then geometry, pre-calculus, calculus. Uh, absolutely. So training. And, but, yeah, and, but isn't that like the same kind of thing where you, you, you can't just see one example and now you have the program or whatever. You actually had to drill it. These models also had to drill it with a bunch of returning data. Sure. I mean, in order to do on-the-fly program synthesis, you actually need uh, building blocks to work from. So knowledge and memory are actually tremendously important in the process. I'm not, I'm not saying it's memory versus reasoning. In order to do effective reasoning, you need memory. 